My name is Dr. Jeff Bazarian. I'm Associate Professor of Emergency Medicine, Neurology, Neurosurgery, and Community Preventive Medicine. There are multiple things that go wrong after a concussion, and, and in the past people used to think that concussion didn't really do anything much at all um, to people's brains. But now we know there's both short and long-term bad effects of concussion. In the short term, after concussion, people have trouble with things like headache, but they also have problems concentrating and doing, doing simple things like um, adding up numbers in the checkbook, doing multiple things at once, talking on the phone and maybe writing something down, and, and irritability. Irritability is a big problem with concussion, and that often disturbs relationships be between the concussed patient and, and their family. Now, the longer term effects of concussion um, are things like dementia or um, mild cognitive impairment. Right now the only way to diagnose a concussion is to uh, ask the patient themselves whether they had symptoms consistent with a concussion. When you think about this, this is kind of uh, almost counterintuitive to ask someone who may have had a brain injury to tell you whether they've had symptoms suggestive of a brain injury. The only tool that we have to help us make those decisions uh, is a CAT scan. And a CAT scan really doesn't see any of the brain injury that we're pretty sure underlies the short and long-term problems associated with a concussion. CAT scan is really good at finding blood, blood that uh, could potentially be life-threatening, blood that can be removed by a neurosurgeon. So in that sense, CAT scans are good and we recommend them, but most of them are negative and don't provide us with any information uh, regarding brain injury that's occurring on a cellular level. So there are currently several research tools that could potentially help us see that brain injury. There are things that would involve um, neuroimaging tests like diffusion tensor imaging, which is kind of like MRI on steroids is the way that I um, describe it. Um, there are also uh, blood tests that might be able to pick up brain injury, just like uh, blood tests are used to pick up heart attacks. And then finally, there's a, there's a host of devices that basically resemble EEG that can be used to determine um, whether someone's had a brain injury after a concussion. The current treatment for concussion in 2011 is rest. And when you think about it, that's really not doing very well because even with rest, 50% of our concussed patients have symptoms at three months that they never had before. So clearly we can do better. And as we get better at understanding who has brain injury and who does not after concussion, then I think we can um, apply this information to the multiple drugs that are waiting in the wings to be tested. Um, and there are a, a, probably a dozen medications that could potentially um, stop or, or slow down the process of brain injury after concussion that can be tested. Now these medications are going to work the best when they're given to people that have brain injury. So we have to know who has brain injury in order to know who should have the medicine in order to decide what medication works. We're also recommending that people who have had a concussion follow up with a specialist who has some experience in concussion management. Um, there are specialists uh, popping up um, in Western New York and other parts of the country. Here at the University of Rochester, we have just such a clinic. It's a sports concussion clinic. It's a collaboration between the Department of Neurosurgery and the Department of Orthopedics. Um, the providers, of which I am one of three, um, can help you know whether you have some cognitive deficits after concussion, know what the best treatment options would be, um, and know when the optimal time to return to contact sports would be.